Welcome to my playhouse and today I'm still working on showing you what I'm using my data center for. Uh, today I'm gonna show you something about rendering on a normal PC. Right here I have a pretty normal office PC. It's an HP small form factor and it's a DC 7900. I have put in a processor that's a little bit faster than the one it came with, but it's just a little bit faster. It's not really worth the effort. But what I've done, I have downloaded um, and installed 3D Studio Max on this machine. It's an old edition and it's just a trial version because I'm just going to show this. So here is my screen and let's open it up. It comes in a 32 bit and a 64 bit. So we're just gonna open the 64 bit edition and it's gonna be opening. Hopefully it's not gonna take too long. And yes, you have 30 days remaining of your uh, trial thing. We're gonna run. It's an old one, it's a 2010. It doesn't really matter for this test. I'm just going to show you what happens when you render something on a computer. So this is 3D Studio Max and we're going to open file. And I have, I have like a Hummer here. And I found that this is a great test for, for finding out how fast your computer is. And it comes with some errors and it doesn't really matter. So we're going to close that and what we'll do we'll go up to render and I'm gonna do a render setup and the only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna save the file uh, file render output that's cool I'll we'll just call it a test and zero one preview uh, we need to save it as a format. I'll just JPEG picture, save, and we can choose the colors. We're not going to, it's absolutely not important. And just for the sake of it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a range of two frames, it's just, there's absolutely nothing happening in this animation. It's just the same car, but by putting in two frames, it means that it doesn't delete the render time. And now we can render. And the render will start in this window. And we'll just get this window so we can see what's going on. No, oh, this one is not moving. But now this computer is rendering this picture. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be very quiet and let it work. You'll be able to see two squares. There's one square here and there's one square here. They're kind of marked out like and that tells me that this computer has two processors. Each square represents one processor, or actually one core in a processor. This computer only has one processor, but it has two cores. Both processors are being used 100%. So everything I do on this computer while it's rendering is taking uh, a little out of the render. That's it. It had com it have completed the first frame, and that's about uh, ten minutes and twenty four seconds over there. So 
It's rather easy. Uh, we're not gonna render the other one. Oh, yeah, it can render. No, I'll pause it. 10 minutes, 24 seconds. And let's just say that there's a hundred frames in this animation. Let's say the car is spinning around or something like that. Let's get our calculator. Where that? So, 10 minutes, 24 seconds. And we'll just say 100 frames equals 1024 and we'll divide that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour so this computer would take 17 hours to complete that task and that's forever and this is not that big and 100 frames is not really that long so let's say there's 10,000 frames in that animation. Let's say 10,000. And just to show you in a, in a normal film, that's like 30, 30 frames a second. So let's divide that by 30 seconds. And let's divide that by, it's like 60 seconds in a minute. So that's a, a five second, no, oh, a five minute uh, animation, 10,000 frames. So if we were supposed to make 10,000 frames and they took like 10 point, hmm, what is that? That's 10.3, trin two five. That's this many seconds, and that will be divided by 60, and that's the hours, and divided again by 24, because there's 24 hours in a day. This computer would use 71 days to complete this, but it's still not that advanced an animation. It's just a car, and it calculates the the reflections if there was like water or something in this it might take well half an hour to well actually on this computer it might take two hours on for each frame and just for the fun of it let's see what kind of a computer this is can we minimize close We have two processors there, and the processor is, it's an E, it's right there, E8500, and that's a 3.16 gigahertz processor. I'm admitting it, it's not, it's not the latest thing. Let's just see what it is, that's Intel, oh, let's just go. CPU, benchmark, searchable list, and it was an E8500, right there, find. So this, oh, this CPU scores about 2000 and, oh, 2310 in here. Mm, that's a... Uh, it's an okay office machine. If you buy a brand new machine today, it would probably do the double, do double. And a fast machine for for home use would be about 8,000. And just to show you why it benefits to use servers for rendering, I have now connected to one of my very fast servers. We are gonna open this file. Uh, there. Benchmark and the Hummer. Um, whatever. And close. 
Shadows. This is an, a newer edition of 3D Studio Max. It should not do anything. It's, it's the same rendering method. This server has considerably more CPUs or cores. So the, the size of the squares that it looks on is important for the, for the time it uses to do this. So in and these squares are like this is the bucket uh, what does it say bucket wide and instead of being 128 times 128 I'm gonna make them considerably smaller. The server has to do the same amount of rendering, but it means that it will be able to use those 24 cores a lot better if I make the blocks smaller. And I have also changed the range so that we get at least two frames. And I'm gonna start rendering. Here are the processors working on the rendered job. And that was the rendering of one picture. And that brought the render job down to 4, 4.08 minutes. And let's just pause that. So if, if this server was working on this job instead, um, let's see the workstation over here, that was 71 days. So if you take 10,000 frames, 10,000 frames, multiply that by 4.08 equals, and we divide that, uh, let's see, that's, that's in minutes, so we divide that by 60 minutes. So 680 hours and we divide that by days divided by 24 so this server doing this by itself would take 28 days compared to 71 days so the server we just saw render one frame is this one number 15 so what you really need to do a fast render job is just more servers so that's why I have a lot of servers, render servers here, render servers here, and down here I have I have blade servers. There's like 14 servers in a, in a chassis like this, and they can all be set to render frames have another blade sender down here haven't really had power on that yet so that's what I used the servers for I render 3d studio max video clips stuff like that the number of, of cores inside these servers really count when you want to do that because every time you can double the, the amount of, of cores you can half in the time that the render job will take as the render time goes down, the complexity goes up. So it's, if somebody is told that the render time will only be half, they will want to render double as much. They will want to render the double amount or have more things in the render job. And just to give you an idea of what this is all about, I have this little animation. Uh, it's. 400 frames long and I just made it into a film so that you can see what's what it's all about. This was made by an Indian company and they just made all the animation and stuff like that and sent me the render job and we rendered this out and they got all the results back. It didn't take that long. This is not very complicated. It's not it's not very advanced but they had like six or seven jobs like this 
So this was 400 frames and some of them was a little larger and some of them was a little smaller. Thank you for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and give me a thumbs up. Have a nice day, bye bye.